So today I thought I'd give you an inside look at the back end of relief supplies. So I'm associated and do volunteer work for an animal shelter and they're in a network that does uh, mutual aid. They've been getting a lot of donations. One of their videos went viral and it resulted in a huge amount of material coming in and it's being divided three ways. A lot of it's going to Western North Carolina. Some of it's going to coastal zones in North Carolina where previous floods still have people that need assistance. And it's going to poor counties that don't have sufficient funds to feed the animals that are in their animal shelters. Now, another area it's going is Southern Virginia mountains. They don't seem to be getting any of the publicity that uh, North Carolina and Tennessee areas are getting. And to kind of give you an idea of how this works and why there are delays in aid moving is you put out a request for donations and aid. It takes about a week and then whoever's supplying the material that people are donating, they gather it, box it up, and they send it to you. So that takes about a week. So for instance, on Monday of last week, we got two truckloads, which was 284 boxes. The next day we got 11 trucks, and that was around 2,500 boxes. The third day we got 20 trucks. And I don't have a real firm count on that. And after about seven days, we've kind of tailored off to like a normal amount of material coming in, which is about a truck and a half a day, and they're not full trucks. And what happens is you have to store this material and move it. So that's going to take you several days. And we receive a lot of assistance from businesses in the area. And then we also use Connex containers. And if you don't have a warehouse, you have to sort the material out of the Connexes. And right now I'm working on these two Connexes. And what happens is you cut the material open and you sort it because in some areas people need dog food, some areas they need cat food only, some areas they need both. And then we also have small amounts of puppy and kitten food. So in the donation package, what happens is you put out a uh, list of materials that you need. 95% of what you get is on that list. And then people also send things that they think you need. And from there, you have to have volunteer personnel to unbox, cut the boxes up, taking all the craft paper and packing peanuts and all that crap and putting it in bags. And then that goes to recycling of the dump, depending on what county you're in. Then what happens is people start coming in to move stuff. And then you load it out depending on what their needs are and away it goes. And the process just keeps going over and over because people need assistance, not just the day of the event and the week after, but it takes years for some of these areas to recover. So they have monthly needs. So what I'll do is show you a mixture of photos and small video clips of about a week's worth of work.
Can you swipe the finish for this stop? Oh, okay.
Another load going out. It's like I talk to people and it doesn't matter if you got a pickup truck, trailer, car, SUV, send what you have. So basically what happens is all the stuff comes in and you have to unbox and sort it. So your first step is moving the stuff to a work platform and I like to have a work platform that's about three feet off the surface that way it limits bending over and after you unpack and sort you have a lot of craft paper and cardboard left over so how you handle that you throw it out yesterday I had a guy cutting them for me and uh, you cut the boxes down you load out the craft paper and then the stuff goes to recycle or the dump depending on what your county does so another part of the unboxing is sorting damaged material and damaged bags and uh, i've probably used two rolls of packing and duct tape in the last two days so i'm averaging about two rolls a day of duct and packing tape to seal uh, bags if canned goods are damaged then they have to go to the dump because if they're broke open or whatever, one of your biggest issues with canned goods is freezing because sometimes recipient groups or the areas receiving the donations to ship out, they have an issue with outside storage. So you have to get all your canned goods out before freezing weather or get them to a location with indoor storage. So we have an Amazon wish list that generates donations and we specify the brands of dog foods and we usually specify the ones that give the least digestive issues. So the stuff we actually use in the shelter is what we use for aid and assistance. The other thing besides dog and cat food is you have supplies such as bedding pellets, trash bags, disinfecting wipes, hoses, and all kinds of other stuff. And uh, when you look at sending out aid, you end up with a lot of incidental labor. And almost all of that is volunteer work. But uh, currently we're sending aid out to Western North Carolina, the coastal areas of North Carolina that were impacted in past floods. People seem to kind of forgot about them. Then you have the Southern Virginia Mountains, nobody mentions, and then Eastern Tennessee. And we're in a assistance network group for animal shelters. So we also send material out to impoverished counties. So that's what the process of doing. And one thing I'd like to mention is people that request aid always mention in your request if you have the capacity to transport the material yourself and what we find is one of the big issues that slows down the amount of material that can move is storage areas on the receiving end because they may only be able to take a month's supply and then they'll come back in a month and get another supply and what we find is some towns and businesses are very cooperative in storing this material for recipients. So that's something to keep in mind. What I find is in the material we received, I've probably unpacked 30% uh, of this Connex container. It's a 40-footer. And you receive a lot of cat and dog food, but I think in this load, I've probably gotten 20 bags of kitten food and a very small amount of puppy food. So uh, a lot of organizations, what they'll do is modify the wish list to account for what's needed. And uh, so if you're one of the donors, be on the lookout for that. Another part of this process is getting the donor tags. And yesterday I generated a large box of donor tags. 
And there's two young ladies that uh, send out thank yous using the QR codes from Amazon to the recipients. But uh, I'd like everybody to be patient because what happens is uh, everybody's limited on man hours. And our main priority is getting the material unpacked, sorted, and loaded out. So when you're cutting and unloading boxes and moving dog food, cat food bags, a good way to take a break and spare you back for a while is to uh, cut the boxes up and uh, do the trash stuff. That way you don't get overrun. Kind of do a little bit of box opening, do a little bit of box cutting, and then trash. So another thing to keep in mind when you're working connexives is there's no lighting in them. So once you get a ways into them, I use small battery powered portable work lights. They take like six AA batteries and they're portable. And I'll use two or three of those to light the container while I'm working. So to kind of sum up, the uh, side that I work on in relief supplies on the animal side as a volunteer and uh, kind of showed you how things go on the back end, how supplies get to where they're supposed to go, what's involved. And I'd like you to keep in mind, all of it is volunteer effort. The American people are extremely generous. The tonnage of material we received and sent out is huge. And, uh, We'd like to thank everybody that contributed supplies and volunteer labor. We'll see you on the next video.